Hello there fans of home projection equipment. This is the Cobol CP Sound 401. It is a super eight millimeter home movie projector and it also records. So you can do sound on sound or you can just replace the soundtrack of your favorite home movie. So uh, what is unusual about this unit is uh, first off, I've never seen the brand Cobol before and it's got a couple of unusual features on it. Of course, sound projection uh, is the funnest of the, the fun because you can get uh, old pre-recorded or, or pre-manufactured uh, studio made films to play on your projector. And you can also play home movies if you happen to have any. But uh, this is a magnetic uh, soundtrack projector. It's a two speed. It has 18 and 24 frames per second. And let's kind of zoom in and look at a couple of things. The interesting thing that it has here is it has a strobe right here. And as you're playing back the film, you can set that strobe so that it plays at the proper speed. So there isn't a selector switch per se. There is just a dial here on the front that you use to adjust that speed with. So you simply turn the dial and when the speed is where you want it, you'll see that these lines become stationary. And I'll demonstrate that for you here in a minute. You have your, uh, your usual controls here. You have your tone and volume controls that you see here. You have your sound on sound and record buttons there. You have a uh, focus adjustment, a frame adjustment, and then you have uh, forward playback and reverse playback, as well as forward and reverse with or without the lamp being on. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it around, show you what's on the back. A couple of other unusual things. You can see here on the plate on the side that the unit is made in Japan. It says uh, CP Sound 401, operating at 120 volts, 60 hertz, 150 watts. The uh, amplifier's output is 8 ohms at 1.5 watts. And it's made by the Copal Company LTD, or Limited, in Japan. Now it has a mic input here, and the mic input actually looks like it has the, the start and stop control on it, which is interesting. I don't know if it actually would start and stop the projector, but... Uh, it has an auxiliary input with a RCA plug on it, and we have an external speaker and we have a monitor speaker output there on the bottom. And then, of course, your power cord. In order to get this unit working, I needed to clean it. It was filthy on the inside. The capstan for, this, for the uh, audio portion of it was really dirty, and it needed a new belt. And the belt I found at Gateway Electronics here in St. Louis, and I believe it was a, a seven inch belt. Maybe, maybe a, it was either a six or a seven inch belt. I don't remember which one, but uh, that was the two things that brought this unit back to working condition. So a lot of these older projectors, depending on the brand, are built like tanks. I mean, there's just very little required, mostly mechanical, to uh, get these units running again. So uh, let's take a look here at uh, that speed adjustment that I was telling you about. So if we turn the unit on, and I have a film in here that's a training film, and it's almost red because of the color fading. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see if you can see that scroll. The use of loops can simplify the programming of repetitive instructions. All right, so you can kind of see it's going to the left there a this little bit. This program contains two loops. So I However, speed it up a little bit. Loop operates at a time. Sometimes programs use a loop within a loop. This is called a nested loop. The inner loop can be repeated many times for each execution of the outer loop. This is like taking a run around a park. Getting on a merry-go-round for a while. Then repeating the run around the park. All right, so you can see there that you have a full range of uh, adjustment for the speed. So I guess if you have a, 
a film that's a little bit off uh, kilter and speed wise, recording wise, or maybe you just want to adjust a projector so that it plays back at a different speed so that you don't get the flicker that you would normally get when you transfer film to video, that would be a, uh, another useful feature. So I'm going to kill the lights in here so we can see the picture quality. All right, so now we are in the dark and only can see the strobe. All right, so let's take a look at the screen. The screen is actually going to be the wall here in my house. And let's see how we do here. Getting back on the merry-go-round and so forth. Many programs use such loops which contain other loops. You can see a little bit of flicker on the, the video to itself. Control a repetitive process usually requires so if I speed it up a little bit, for counting iterations, we don't have as much uh, a test to decide when to leave the loop in the way and of an instruction to set the count flicker. before entering the loop. When one loop is nested within another, the inner loop becomes the process being controlled by still more count test and set instructions so you can see that speed adjustment could be very to useful in uh, loops work, transferring a film over to a video to sort some numbers into ascending sequence let's look at the heart of the program first to sort numbers we must compare them <laughs> my camera's freaking out a little bit there greater than the number in location 2. No, these two numbers are already in ascending sequence. Next, we need to compare these two numbers. We'll need to change these pointers. We follow the no leg from the compare to a count instruction. This is where we change the pointers. If we give the first pointer a name, I, the other pointer can be I plus one. Now, if we use I for our count, when I changes, the pointers change. Now, oddly enough, this is actually doing what it's supposed to do. I have never seen one that flipped and twisted around as much as this one does. But uh, it is, it's actually attached to the take-up spindle there but it has this lot of free play here as part of the take up. It's uh, kind of strange actually. So you can see how much that's spinning around there. Let's see how this works. Our count instruction can read, add one to I. For the moment, we'll take a shortcut back to so our So we're going quite a bit faster than we should I on this uh, film. So I plus one is three. And there's the real speed, based on the uh, strobe adjustment right here on the front. Compare. This number is greater than this number. So there you have it, the Copal CP Sound 401 home projector. And uh, one other feature it does have is the little cutter here on the side for trimming the uh, film so it goes into the loading mechanism better. Uh, loading is really easy. You just turn it to the F position here and insert your film and it pulls it all the way through and winds it on to the take-up spindle. Of course, this isn't an automatic take-up spindle, so you have to stick the film in this little slot here on the take-up side. So I found this at uh, a local thrift store and messed around with it a little bit at the store and discovered that it was probably a belt that it needed and uh, it ended up being the belt. So um, an excellent machine and uh, the electronics of course are in working condition and that makes it even more fun to experiment with. So I appreciate you watching, and uh, I do have a couple more of these uh, projectors on my channel, a couple of Bell & Howell units that I take apart and uh, show you how they work. And, uh, well, I don't necessarily take them apart, but, you know, just kind of review them a little bit. 
and thank you for watching and have a great day.